The New Deal, which is Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a charter member of the oligarchic class, said, saved capitalism, was put in place because socialists were strong and a threat. The oligarchs understood that with the breakdown of capitalism, something I expect we will witness in our own lifetimes, there was a real possibility of a revolution. They were terrified they would lose their wealth and power. Roosevelt, writing to a friend in 1930, said, there was no question in my mind that it is time for the country to become fairly radical for at least one generation. History shows that when this occurs occasionally, nations are saved from revolution. In other words, Roosevelt went to his fellow oligarchs and said, hand over some of your money or you will probably lose all of your money. And his fellow capitalists complied. And that is how the government created 15 million jobs, social security, unemployment benefits, and public works projects. The capitalists did not do this because the suffering of the masses moved them. They did this because they were scared. And they were scared of radicals and socialists. We must stop looking for our salvation in strong leaders. Strong people, as Ella Baker said, do not need strong leaders. Politicians, even good politicians, play the game of compromise and are too often seduced by the privileges of power. Sanders, from all I can tell, began his political life as a socialist in the 60s when this was hardly a bold political statement, but quickly figured out that he was not going to have a seat at the table if he remained one. He wants his seniority in the Senate. He wants his committee chairmanships. He wants his ability to retain his Senate seat unchallenged. And no doubt this was politically astute, but in the process, he sold us out. Jeremy Corbyn, the new head of the Labour Party, offers another example. He spent three decades marginalized, even within his own party, because he held fast to the central tenets of socialism. And as the lie of neoliberalism, championed by the two ruling parties in Britain, became apparent, people knew whom they could trust. Corbyn never made an astute career move in his life, and that is why the establishment is so frightened of him. They know they cannot buy Corbyn off any more than you could buy off Mother Jones, Emma Goldman, or Big Bill Haywood. <laughs> Integrity and courage are powerful weapons, and we have to learn how to use them. We have to stand up for what we believe in. And we have to accept the risks and even the ridicule that comes with this stance. We will not prevail any other way. As a socialist, I am not concerned with what is expedient or what is popular. I am concerned with what is right. I am concerned with holding fast to the core ideals of socialism if for no other reason than keeping this option alive for future generations. And these ideals are the only ones that will make possible a better world. If you will not call for an arms embargo, along with a boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel, you are not a socialist. If you will not demand we dismantle our military establishment, which after all is managing the government's wholesale surveillance of every citizen and storing all our personal information in perpetuity in government computer banks, and if you will not abolish the for-profit arms industry, you are not a socialist. If you will not call for the prosecution of those leaders, including George W. Bush and Barack Obama, 
to engage in aggressive acts of preemptive war, which under post-Nuremberg laws is a crime of aggression, you are not a socialist. If you will not stand with all of the oppressed across the globe, you are not a socialist. Socialists do not pick and choose whom among the press, oppressed it is convenient to support. Socialists understand that you stand with all of the oppressed or none of the oppressed. That this is a global fight for life against global corporate tyranny. And we will only win when we stand together with the working men and women in Greece, Spain, Egypt, and every other country that has defined the tyranny of global capitalism. If you will not call for full employment and unionized workplaces, you are not a socialist. If you will not call for inexpensive mass transit, especially in impoverished communities, you are not a socialist. If you will not call for universal single-payer health care and a banning of the for-profit health care corporations, you are not a socialist. If you will not raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, you are not a socialist. If you are not willing to provide a weekly income of $600 to the unemployed, the disabled, stay-at-home parents, the elderly, and those unable to work, you are not a socialist. If you will not repeal anti-union laws, like the Taft-Hartley Act, and trade agreements from NAFTA to the TPP and CAFTA, you are not a socialist. If you will not support two years of paid maternity leave, as well as shorter work weeks with no loss in pay and benefits, you are not a socialist. If you will not repeal the Patriot Act in Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act, as well as end government spying on citizens, along with mass incarceration, you are not a socialist. If you will not put into place laws that prohibit all forms of male violence against women and criminalize the trafficking and pimping out of prostituted girls and women while not criminalizing the exploited girls and women, you are not a socialist. If you do not support a woman's right to control her own body, you are not a socialist. If you do not support full equality for GVLT community, you are not a socialist. If you do not declare global warming a national and global emergency and devote our energy and resources to saving the planet through public investment in renewable energy and an end to our reliance on fossil fuels, you are not a socialist. If you will not nationalize all public utilities, including the railroads, energy companies, and the banks, you are not a socialist. If you will not support government funding for the arts and public broadcasting to create places where creativity, self-expression, and voices of dissent can be heard and seen, you are not a socialist. If you will not terminate our nuclear weapons program and build a nuclear-free world, you are not a socialist. If you will not demilitarize our police, and this means that police no longer carry weapons when they patrol our streets. They must rely on specialized units that have to be specially authorized, case by case, to use lethal force. And if you don't do this, you are not a socialist. If you will not support government training and rehabilitation programs for the poor and those in our prison system, along with the abolition of the death penalty, you are not a socialist. 
If you will not grant full citizenship to undocumented workers, you are not a socialist. If you will not declare a moratorium on foreclosures and bank repossessions, you are not a socialist. If you will not provide free, state-run mental health care, especially for those caged in our prisons, you are not a socialist. If you will not provide government-funded education from daycare to university and forgive all student debt, you are not a socialist. And finally, if you will not dismantle our empire and bring our soldiers and marines home, you are not a socialist. Socialists do not sacrifice the weak and the vulnerable, especially children, on the altar of profit. And the measure of a successful society for a socialist is not the GDP or the highs of the stock market, but the right of everyone, especially children, never to go to bed hungry, to live in safety and security, to be nurtured and educated, and to grow up to fulfill his or her potential. I am not naive about the forces arrayed against us. I understand the difficulty of our struggle. But we will never succeed if we attempt to accommodate the current structures of power. Our strength lies in our steadfastness and our integrity. It lies in our ability to hold fast to our ideals, as well as our willingness to sacrifice for those ideals. We must refuse to cooperate. We must march to the beat of a different drum. We must rebel. And we must grasp that rebellion is not carried out finally for what it achieves, but for who it allows us to become. Rebellion sustains us in an age of darkness. It provides hope and the capacity for love. And rebellion must become our vocation. You do not become a dissident just because you decide one day to take up this most unusual career, Václav Havel said, when he was battling the communist regime in Czechoslovakia. You are thrown into it by your personal sense of responsibility, combined with a complex set of external circumstances. You are cast out of the existing structures and placed in a position of conflict with them. It begins as an attempt to do your work well and ends with being branded an enemy of society. The dissident does not operate in the realm of genuine power at all. He or she is not seeking power. He or she has no desire for office and does not gather votes he or she does not attempt to charm the public. He or she offers nothing and promises nothing. He or she can offer, if anything, only their own skin. And you offer it solely because you have no other way of affirming the truth you stand for. The dissident's actions simply articulate his dignity as a citizen, regardless of the cost. These neoliberal forces are destroying our Earth. Polar ice caps and glaciers are melting. Temperatures and sea levels are rising. Species are going extinct. Floods, monster hurricanes, mega droughts, wildfires, have begun to eat away at the systems that sustain life. The great mass migrations predicted by climate scientists have begun. And even if we stopped all carbon emissions today, we would still endure the effects of catastrophic climate change. 
out of the disintegrating order comes nihilistic violence, which characterizes all societies that fall apart. Mass shootings at home, religious persecution, beheadings, executions by individuals that neoliberalism and globalism has demonized, attacked, and discarded as human refuse. I cannot promise you we will win. I cannot promise you we will even survive as a species. But I can promise you that an open and sustained defiance of global capitalism and the merchants of death, along with the building of a socialist movement, is our only hope. I am a parent, as are many of you, and we have betrayed our children. We have squandered their future. And if we rise up, even if we fail, future generations, and especially those who are most precious to us, will at least be able to say that we tried, that we stood up, that we fought for life. The call to resistance, which will require civil disobedience and jail time, is finally a call to the moral life. In the end, I do not fight fascists because I will win. I fight fascists because they are fascists. Thank you.